Okay, hello everybody. I'm back once again. God still speaks his messages and dreams. Yes, he does. Um, briefly, I want to talk a little bit about Revelation, the 11th chapter. It talks about the two witnesses of Revelation. Who is the two witnesses of Revelation? Who are the two witnesses of Revelation? Okay, who are they? The two witnesses of Revelation. Revelation 11, chapter third verse okay we we have been told that the two witnesses of revelation is elijah and moses some believe it's elijah and enoch now after reading some of the after reading enoch's writing uh i've come to believe it's enoch because enoch said that he would he was one of the witnesses of revelation okay that's what he recorded. Um, but now, I can't find anything in Scripture that says that Enoch and Elijah or Elijah and Moses will be the two witnesses of Revelation. I can't find anything in Scripture on that. I'm not saying that they're not. I'm just saying that I haven't found anything uh, and most people that teach this hasn't found anything either. They just, just by the, just by the, uh, the uh, acts of these two witnesses, by their powerful demonstrations, they assume that just going by their powerful demonstrations, the demonstration of powers, we assume that this, these two people, these two people are. Moses and Elijah but uh, it doesn't say that exactly okay but it does say that the two witnesses of Revelation will be the church and the nation of Israel and now it does say that now whether or not Elijah and Moses or Elijah and Enoch will come back I don't know they might, they might be here. Okay, I would tend to think it would be Elijah and uh, Enoch because Elijah and Enoch have never died. They were both raptured. Moses died. Um, plus, if you read in some of Enoch's writings, uh, Enoch said that he was coming back. Okay, that's what he said, but. Just from reading the scripture, it looks like what I all I can gather is the two witnesses of Revelation is the two witnesses of Revelation will be uh, the church and the nation of Israel. Now, this is why I believe this. It says here in Revelation 11 chapter, it says. In the third verse, it said, I will give power unto my two witnesses, and they shall prophesy 1,200 de and threescore days, which is three and a half years. And by the way, the tribulation is only going to be three and a half years. It will not be seven years. It's three and a half years. Okay, I know we've been taught that the tribulation period is seven years. It is not. The peace treaty will be signed for seven years. According to the book of Daniel, the peace treaty will be signed for seven years, but he's going to break that covenant, that peace treaty, after three and a half years. And that's when the abomination of desolation starts, after three and a half years. And according to Matthew 25th chapter, then we will, after the abomination of desolation, then the tribulation, the great tribulation will start. That's what it says. Okay? Now, um, I believe the two witnesses of Revelation is the church and the nation of Israel. Okay, and the fourth verse it says, These are the two olive trees and the two candlesticks standing before the God of the earth. Okay, it tells you right here who the two uh, witnesses of Revelation is. Okay, it tells you. It says they are the candlesticks and... They are the candlesticks 
and the olive branches standing before the God of the earth. Who in the earth are better witnesses for God than the church and the nation of Israel? Okay. Uh, the church and the nation of Israel, the church demonstrates God's power, his love. The nation of Israel, we can see how God has always worked for them. Okay history but the Bible said that <clears throat> the two witnesses of Revelation is the candlesticks and uh, let's see the two candlesticks oh wait a minute let me get this right okay it says here in Revelation 4 my mind's just kind of scattered for some reason this morning. Revelation 11 and 4 says, These are the two olive trees describing, he's describing the two witnesses. These are the two olive trees and the two candlesticks standing before the God of the earth. Now, let's just go to scripture and find out who are the candlesticks and the olive tree. Let's go to Zechariah 4 and 11. Zechariah 4 and 11. I'm going to show you it is the church and the nation of Israel. Okay. Zechariah 4 11 it says, Then answered I and said unto him, What are these two olive trees upon the right side of the, of the candlestick and upon the left side thereof? Okay, you see the candlestick and the olive trees are mentioned here. And I answered him, saying, I said unto him, What be these two olive branches, which through the two golden pipes empty the golden oil out of themselves? And he answered me and said, Knowest thou not what these be? And I said, No, my Lord. Then he said, these are the two anointed ones. Now, again, I'm not saying even I'm not saying Eli, Elijah and Moses will not return, or Eli, Elijah and uh, Enoch will not return. They may. Okay, they may. I'm not saying they won't. But I am saying that the Bible is pretty clear about uh, the church and the nation of Israel being the two witnesses, two witnesses of Revelation. Then said he, these are the two anointed ones which stand for the Lord of the whole earth. That's what he just said in Revelation. Okay. <clears throat> the two olive branches and the two golden pipes. Now, let's find out who the two olive branches are and the two uh, left stands are. Okay. Let's go to Romans 11, 17. Romans 11, 17. Romans 11, 17. It says here, it's talking about Okay, what it's talking about here, Romans eleven seventeen, is that it's, it's talking, it's used symbolically, it's talking about an olive tree. And it says, and if some of the branches be broken off this olive tree, and thou being a wild olive tree, Gentiles, I don't believe we're Gentiles, I believe most of us blacks are of the tribe of Judah, but for the sake of argument, we just say we're Gentiles. But the Gentiles were uh, what is called here is being called a wild olive tree, and it says we were grafted in to uh, the branches or the olive tree of Israel. 
Okay. It says, boast not against the branches or against Israel. But if thou boast, thou bearest not the root, but the root of thee. Okay. Thou, sh thou will say unto the branches, be broken off, that I might be grafted in. Okay. What this is saying here. Because of Israel's unbelief, they were broken off. And then God put us Gentiles, he grafted us into the branch. Okay. Uh, so you got actually two olive trees here. You got the Gentiles and you got the nation of Israel. But it goes on to say that uh, the uh, nation of Israel will be brought back. Okay. You'll have the uh, the uh, uh, what you call that domestic olive branch I guess you would call it domestic and then you will have the wild olive branch okay growing together you have the Jew and the Gentile okay you got to find this in Revel I mean Romans 11 chapter it clearly describes the church and the nation of Israel as olive branches okay and then you go to Revelation that one in 12 it says it talks up here it talks about the candlesticks of the golden lampstands the church here is called the candlestick and the golden and the lampstand okay um, it says and I turned to see the voice that spoke with me and began turn and being turned I saw seven golden candlesticks and in the midst of the seven candlesticks, one like unto the Son of Man, clothed with a garment down to his foot, and girded about the paps with a golden girdle. Okay. All right, here you see the. Um, thank you, Jesus. And here in the. Revelation 1 and the 20th verse it says the mystery of the seven stars which thou sawest in my right hand and the seven golden candlesticks the seven stars are the angels of the seven churches and the seven candlesticks which thou sawest are the seven churches okay so it's uh, it's pretty clear that is saying that the two witnesses of Revelation is the church and the nation of Israel. Okay? It's the church and the nation of Israel. The candlesticks are described as the nation of Israel and the church. The olive branches are described as the church, as the nation of Israel and the church. Okay? Um, I know this, this is not a lot. Uh, it's not a lot to chew on, but that's just what it says. Okay? Uh, God is going to give this authority. I don't know if you read the power and authority these two witnesses will have, but this power and authority will be, he's going to give to the church and the nation of Israel. Okay? We will have I've had many dreams about this. I've seen churches, I've seen people, Christians, with their power that was in their words, been able to speak things into existence instantly. Okay? And they they're able to speak uh, and punish people with their words. And so this is what's going to be going on in the tribulation period. But it's only going to be for about three and a half years. Okay. Uh, so uh, we're in for some very exciting times. And uh, God is going to give the church and the nation of Israel the power to judge evildoers, the power to judge the world.
before, excuse me, before the, before the millennium reign. All right. All right. That's all I got to say on that. Uh, hope you got something out of it. Yeah, read the, read the, all the powers and abilities that the two witnesses will have. Read Revelation 11, chapter 3, the third verse. Uh, I guess all the way to the 10th verse, 3 to 10, okay? All right. Um, oh, furthermore, I think... Uh, I think the two witnesses of Revelation, as I said earlier, the two witnesses of Revelation is the church and the nation of Israel. And in the eighth verse it says, and their dead bodies shall lie. No, it's in the seventh verse it says, and when they shall have finished their testimony, the beast that ascended out of the bottomless pit shall make war against them and shall overcome them and kill them. And their dead bodies shall lie in the streets of the great city, which is spiritually called Sodom and Egypt where also our Lord was crucified. Okay, Egypt, Sodom, was, was also where our Lord was crucified. And of course, that's Israel, the nation of Israel again, uh, or Jerusalem. And Egypt, of course, represents the world, the rest of the world. That's what that Egypt means, the rest of the world. Okay, we know Egypt symbolizes the world. And they of the people and kindreds and tongues and nations shall see their dead bodies three and a half days and a half and shall not suffer their dead bodies to be put in the grave. This is talking about the church and the nation of Israel. Okay, Their dead bodies will lay in the streets all over the world. All right? And the people are going to celebrate their deaths. But then it says after three and a half days, three and a half days uh, the spirit of life from God entered into them and they stood on their feet okay this is going to be the church and the nation of Israel when they are raptured when they are raised from the dead and they are raptured and all of this is taking place let's see at the in the 11th verse. Okay. I'm oh, sorry, I'm sleepy. But this is the church and the nation of Israel being raptured. All right. So you can't say you don't know when the rapture is going to take place because it's telling you right here three, three and a half days after their assassination or after they're killed. All right. Thanks for listening, guys. To speak through visions and dreams.